now welcome back to Snake River Fly. Uh, today we're going to be tying our floating clouser minnow with our new fish wisp and some of our new booby eyes. Um, cool bug fishing on a sink's tip. Uh, this one's been getting them on pyramid for the Tua chub, but also working great as perch and stuff like that down um, on American Falls. So we've got a Matsu uh, B1 in a size 6. Super kick-ass hook we got here at the shop. Um, similar bend to um, big game hooks, tarpon hook, that kind of stuff. Gives us a little bigger gap and a good straight shank, which is cool for if you're gonna put like a booby eye on something, sometimes you'll take up some of that um, hooking, that hook gap will get taken up by these boobies, booby eyes or foam eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. We've got our fish wisp. Um, this particular one is just white. And this is a lot like all the other big fly slinky materials you have out there. Um, we have it now in a bunch of colors and um, it's really cool to work with. You just grab a little small amount of it, less than you think you need, and then hold the, hold the zip tie down on this end and it'll come right out and that'll give you plenty to work with. And so that's the white. Also have it in camel, which is gonna be our, our middle of our fly. So this is basically a clouser, but we are gonna add an additional wing onto it. So there's the camel, pulling a little bit out. I'm just setting these off to the side. And then we're gonna finish up with the brown. I already got a little bit one open because we've been tying bugs with it and a group of that. So like I said, it's like a clouser, but instead of working from top to bottom, we're going to start in the middle first. So I've got some of my fish wisp here. I'm going to go ahead and do, you know, like at least two body lengths out that I'm making a bait fish here. Um, this particular one works great in the spring. Um, around here we get a lot of chubs, a lot of sucker minnows, stuff like that. Also, I think works good for you know, crawfish and stuff like that. And I've just tied a chunk of it out the back. I'm just going to come up the shank here forward. And I've got the leftover piece off here. If I want to tie this really sparse, I can cut this at this point. But, you know, it's, it's pretty sparse in my opinion, so I'll just lay that tan one back in there and go ahead and give it another little wrap back there and just give it a little trim. The cool stuff about this kinked fiber stuff like this, like the fish wisp, is that it, you don't have to really manipulate it to get a taper um, just because of the waves in it. Okay, so there's basically the middle of the fly and now what we'll do is we'll come forward to that midpoint right in front of our last groups and now I'll take what's going to be the bottom of the fly and that is our fish wisp in white this will be a white minnow on the belly or at least on one side of it and go ahead and just kind of lengthen that up so it tapers naturally I'm looking for a taper taper to kind of go at this angle and I'll tie my white in Loose wrap over the top. And then some Shakira's. Shakira, Shakira. Forward. Now comes our piece of foam, our booby eye. And so I think you get 10 or 12 of these in a pack. This is six millimeter. Have it in several colors, but you'll get at least two booby eyes out of these. You know, they're an inch and a half or something like that. Our booby eye only needs to be so-so. So tie it on similar to a clouser on top because we're looking for that random movement. Um, fishing these on sink tips. So just like I'd tie in a set of eyes, I'm in front of the foam on my side, behind the foam on the camera side. Two or three of them to get that kind of anchored in there. I better do one more and then I'll come to the other side and I'll start behind the foam on my side 
in front of the foam on your side and that'll form you know just like tying in a set of barbell eyes that'll give us our foam booby eyes and so I'll show you you know if you looked at it from like this you know obviously we don't need one eye all the way out there so I can take and cut this you can pre-cut them too whatever but that's all I'm really interested in and I'll shape it up a little bit before we're done so we've got our booby eyes on got our middle part of our bug we got our first layer of our belly on I've got my thread in front of the booby eyes still working with that same hank of fish wisp and I'll bring that up to right behind the hook eye like so and then we'll do a wrap or two right here in front of it and that'll comb it back and kind of give us that nice belly same thing you know I can even just cut it off straight and we'll probably dink around with it and taper it a little bit at the end if you wanted this to be a fuller fly you could also just take and put another clump on there but you know, we're not looking for super thick on this bug. So we've done all our stuff, just like our clouser. We tied our lead eyes on. We have the bottom of our clouser, the belly of the bug taken care of. Now we're gonna invert that hook like so. And we'll take our dark color of fish wisp. This is brown. Okay, and so it's gonna give us that kind of cool pale minnow look, um, just fishy bait fishy especially for the spring and what I'll do is I'll instead of having this come blunt with the belly in the middle part I'm going to tie it in a little longer I'll tie it in on my side of the hook over here on the bend and I'll make it a little bit longer like so and I'll just do a loose wrap onto that fish wisp capturing those fibers and then I'll make sure it's anchored down and I'm on if you look this clump is on this side of the shank now I'll take this one and fold it back onto your side of the shank and that'll equalize it out and give us some nice uniformity as far as symmetry left and right I'll just go ahead and cut that leftover piece off. If you wanted to make this a little thicker, you could add that guy, um, but I'll save this for the next one. We'll just stick with what we got here, pretty sparse little minnow pattern. Clean up our fish wisp. Fish wisp ties in real small, um, unlike bucktail and a lot of other things, or you know, a lot of these synthetic fibers, not just fish wisp. If you manage them right and you, you tie them in, half the amount and you fold them back on themselves, you won't build up a lot of head like you will on bucktail. And it makes a super durable fly as well. Um, now we'll just whip finish. Um, you know, make sure the front of the fly looks good, however you like it. I like to put 352 whip finishes, or what's today? Ah, uh, we'll just put 17, 16 in there. Three will do it though. And so now I've got my bug and a little manipulation on the vise. This material is pretty pliable, pretty movable. You can tweak it a little bit and it'll have some memory, however you tweak it. And, you know, I won't get crazy on this because a lot of times on any of these synthetics, if you start trimming, you know, it's, it's tough to say when to stop. So as it sets right now, I probably won't trim this thing at all. Um, we fish them pretty much since we've been going through so many of them originally um and we still do if we're going to put them in the bins i guess but um we were putting stick on you know mirage eyes really cool eyes and all that stuff which looks really, really rad but you don't need to you know we've just been putting a pupil on them like a basic clouser eye what i'm going to do here is i'm going to they're, they're pretty square i'm going to taper them just a little teeny bit and I'll, show you that hopefully i got the right angle there and i'm just going to kind of taper them a touch so they swim just a little bit better i mean we are looking for an erratic moving fly but 
just makes them cast a little better and just kind of trim those down so if you look at it from the top look at it from the bottom you know we still got that cool little bit of floatability and this one is a little lopsided we don't care about that what we want is the random movement um, in this fly kind of like a floating or jointed Rapala and so you could just put an eye on these it seems to work just dang near as well with a sharpie because we all know that you know stick on epoxy eyes are really cool but as soon as you bang that thing against a rock bank or a bridge oh I thought I had a black one on me anyway <clears throat> Here's a basic guy. Oh, look at that. There's a big mamba. King size. You know, like I said, you can get as artsy fartsy as you want, trying to make them look exact, but the idea is the movement. These things have been working super well for us. Um, we finally, you know, there's a lot of fibers out there. We've chased down all sorts of different synthetic fibers, as we always do and will continue to do. Um, but this particular one has enough volume to it it's easy to work with comes in a ton of colors has great shine and you don't have to get really artsy fartsy in in trimming up the fish or trimming up the fly so there you have it there's a I don't know, fish wisp booby booby clouser booby clouser we have the eyes in black white purple green tan they're six millimeter we have the uh, fish wisp in, gosh, probably 30, 30. 30 colors right now. And we'll be uh, debuting all of uh, this stuff, what, a week from today at Southeastern Idaho Fly Tying Expo in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Put on by the Snake River Cutthroats. Long-standing tradition, great to be back up there. We'll have a booth, we'll be doing some clinics and uh, doing some theater time. So. Drop by and see us and thanks a bunch.